Coffee with Crime and Sugar by Shakespeare on AO3, Episode 7, Chapter 2. The home screen is the same as the lock screen. The same blends of purple, very fitting for the other. Purple is a mysterious color, after all. Maybe Izuku can unlock some of that mystery within the next 14 minutes. At the bottom of the screen, the window to a note stock had been minimized. He enlarges it to see what the other has been typing away at and being so secretive about. The idea of an old gossiping Baba being right about Mirasakai being a pro hero had never stayed in Izuku's mind. Though, if he were a hero, Izuku might get some heat for snooping around what could be classified documents. Though, that's never been an issue for him before. But the thing that does find leading him to believe that something else that's equally not good, or perhaps worse, will happen if caught. Izuku's hands freezes, the cursor going still as he reads over the words typed onto the document. Body heat, 41.6 Celsius. When a person's body core temperature hits this, heat stroke can be reversed and provide fatal. Cold water, 4 degrees Celsius. Water saps body heat. A person will barely last 30 minutes. Hot air, 148.8 Celsius. Adults can survive 10 minutes in this temperature, burning buildings, deep mines. Starvation, 45 days. If a person loses 30% part of their body weight, death is imminent, although disease will kill a person before they have the chance to starve. Lack of oxygen, 11 minutes. The average person will pass out after two minutes without oxygen. Blood loss, 40%. A person can survive after losing 30% of their blood. After 40, a person will need immediate blood transfusion. Dehydration, seven days. Even cells in a person's body need water. Without being able to replace the quarter of water a person loses per day, they will not last for more than a week. Izuku stares in shock at the Marbury notes. What does his neighbor have this random info saved? Sure, not for work or anything, right? What would one even need this for? Maybe if someone were a med student? But Mirasaka is not a med student. And Izuku can't think of any freelance work that involves weird stuff like this. He gulps, minimizing the note doc. Surely it's nothing, just an odd hobby. Noting the human body's limitations and such. This is fine. Izuku shouldn't worry too much about it. Just to prove himself that it's probably nothing serious, Izuku goes onto the internet browser there. The icon loading before taking him there. He moves the cursor over to click the three dots in the top right corner to bring up the option to view the search history, and perhaps Izuku should have stayed curious. Circulation cutoff limits, oxygen deprivation, and hypothermia. How long for a human body to decompose in certain conditions? Forensics detail identification. Izuku stops reading. He feels frozen in place. Why is this on here? Why is Mirasakai looking up suspicious things like this? Izuku's heart is racing a mile a minute. But it's not like he could feel flustered. He feels a cold sweat go over him. He's still got the jitters from falling asleep on that crime documentary a few days ago. And with things he just read right now, as well as the other observations, a morbid realization is painted out. No, not painted out. Splattered like blood on a wall. Hitman. Mirasakai is some sort of contract killer. This is not good. This is not something that Izuku should be looking at right now. If it were documents of pro hero, Izuku would probably get jail time and put on some sort of watch list, but documents on a murder? He can only assume there is a different, harsher punishment for that. Izuku's skin feels cold and clammy. What is he supposed to do? act natural while knowing that there's a hitman in the building that he lives in? Wait a minute, is he here on a job? His breath starts coming out, just a tad shaky, and he has to count the seconds of his 
inhales as he tries to relax himself from the new information. It'll be okay. He'll act like nothing is different. He won't think of Mirasaki's strong hands, the ones that held him steady from falling just a while earlier, wrapped around someone else's throat, squeezing until there's a choked wheeze and a snap. Izuku damn near jumps out of his skin, a muttered gasp leaving him. That might have just been his soul exiting his body. A sound of three steady knockings on his door. Crap, 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 crap. He hastily exited off the browser, shutting the com laptop completely but quietly, and stuffing the thing back inside the computer lag. Another set of knocks occur when Izuku is apparently taking his time. It would annoy him just like the first time Mirasaki was persistent when knocking at his door, but the fact that Izuku is now aware of his profession just makes him skittish whenever calling out the stuttering words of, Just a sec! Okay, be normal. He tells himself when he gets his hand on the door handle, taking a steady breath while twisting it and pulling the door open. Maybe it's because the cat's out of the bag, but he thinks Murasaka looks even more intimidating and sadly, still attractive, while standing there in front of him. Something wrong. Izuku tries to keep cool. He can't give away the fact of what he just saw. Seems like there was a miss-up. Mirasakai merely says, lifting up Izuku's computer bag. Didn't notice till a bit ago. Oh! Izuku says in what he hopes is convincing surprise. Uh, hold on a sec. He turns and goes to the couch where the other bag is the whole time feeling on edge about having his back to the other, because he remembers in great detail the dramatized scene in the crime documentary where the young woman was stabbed in the back 12 times before being stuffed into a vent. Oh, God. Isaku hopes he won't be stuffed into a vent to decompose. <laughs> well, would you look at that? He says while opening up the bag to see Mirasaka's laptop, as if he wasn't familiar with the contents inside said laptop. I probably wouldn't have noticed till I went to the cafe later tonight. Oh, lucky I caught you. Though, it helps that we live in the same building and all. Murasaki says from the door, allowing Izuku to calm down the tiniest amount. Right, well, Izuku starts, bringing the bag over and exchanging it with his own. Thank you for bringing it back to me, and sorry for the trouble. It's no trouble. The other says, but he's looking at Izuku a bit oddly, eyes scanning over him like he's trying to figure out something. It makes Izuku's heart ring loud in his ears, like the other knows. But then, all that Mirasaka points out is, You look a little green there, Midori. <laughs> what a coincidence, Izuku says, trying to keep a light mood despite the hair on his back standing up. That's not what I meant, Mirasaka says. I just... Izuku falters a bit. He's never been all that good with convincing. That, and he keeps having a panic attack at bay because he's standing right in front of a hitman. I think I might be coming down with something. The other hums, as if he's considering Izuku's answer to be true or not. Well, you should go and get some rest then. He then says, an easy, soft look on him. One that you wouldn't think a killer would wear. That way, you can make more of those desserts for me to try. I ran out already. Uh, right. Izuku's horrible nerves finally make him stutter. Well, goodbye. Uh, see you around. He says as his farewell. He does not close his door. He watches as Mirasakai walks to the elevator, waves goodbye to the man, and holds his breath as he steps inside, and the doors close. After that, Izuku closes his front door, fastening every lock into place. He wonders if he should add a few more. I should have predicted that this was going to be a plot point. Why? Because my search history looks the same. In fact, I, I don't take notes of it, but I might look at the notes that Mirasaki has aka Hitoshi and cross-reference with things that I know. Um, and, and, and do my own research and then take those same notes because, oh my fucking god, I recently have gotten, um, uh, this, I don't just take the notes for, like, my writing and stuff. I think my only saving grace that, you know, tells my FBI, um, <laughs> FBI agent that is looking through my, you know, history and stuff like that 
that I am a writer is because I constantly am um, also putting synonyms for blank, different words for blank, how to blank. And it's like a bunch of like writing stuff where it's like how to say like without saying like. That's how I used to say it in the past. Now I just do like cinnamons for like, or I go to hip, uh, hippo.com. I think it was called hippo.com, something around that. It's one of my saved uh, tabs, so I don't have to rememberize the um, website anymore. But I go into those websites that have a bunch of similes, and I'm on there for like hours at a time. I'm also always on uh, searching up tips for writers, different writing devices, tips for writing different writing devices. So I put tips for writing, foreshadowing, and I go through like, all of those links and exhaust all that and I watch literally hour long videos on how to write and stuff like that which is why I have improved so much from when I was in high school to now because when I was in high school and in, uh, in middle school when I would write stories back then they were kind of crap now they're better they're more improved obviously I have more improvement to do and I, I cannot wait to improve even more because I feel like I'm not to my best abilities which is why I continue to uh, work on it but my search history is actually atrocious I now know, um, if, because one of my characters has this, but if your hand was to be chopped off and you started to apply pressure to where it got cut off, it is a clean cut, kind of, it's a little shabby, there's no connecting parts, um, how long, I know exactly how long it would have to last like that with the arm being out and separated from the body so that that arm can no longer be attached and so that the person doesn't die which is an hour an hour and that is pushing it an hour and immediate medical care afterwards right uh, i could shorten it down if i make it uh so that uh the hand is being touched by uh alley an alleyway and dirty stuff the amputated arm and stuff like that. Or I could have it where it's like partially cut and um, there was so much infection and stuff like that that even if the cut is a bit more below, they have to cut it more higher because a lot of that got really badly infected and needs to now be, you know, um, amputated. So yeah, I have a... Uh, my, my search history is really bad too. <laughs> if people look through my search history, they would think I'm a murderer or planning a murder. And the only saving grace that I would have would be the fact that I also search up things like simile or how do you spell and then I put, or like, no, I don't even put how do you spell anymore. I just put the word, right? I just put the word and how I think it's spelled. And then if it doesn't autocorrect it there with Google, then uh, I, what's it called? I then put it in a sentence. And then if that doesn't work, then I put it how to spell and then that normally helps me out and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I also search up dictionary. like. Big fancy word for like, big fancy word for this, big fancy word for that, and stuff like that. So that is my only saving grace. I think if Izuku would have seen all of that search history and then like at the end, it would have been something like other word for said. That would have then clicked like, oh, okay, he's not a murderer. This is a, this is a writer. Uh, I wonder what type of things Hitoshi writes. Because, um, for me, the reason why I need to know, um, the arm thing, the cutting arm thing, is because one of my characters loses their arm, and I want them to lose their arm, in the sense that they have to, like, fully amputate it, and they can't put it back on, but, um, also not have it so that the person dies. <laughs> it's a really tr fine line, I'm gonna say that. It's a really fine line. But, um, yeah, that's why there's also other stuff that I need to, like, figure out, like, for example, um... I did a whole lot of research on terminal illness uh, and a bunch of different types of terminal illness. I did a lot of research on, oh, I forgot what it's called, but it's um, the lack of melanin. Uh, when somebody's born with a lot of lack of melanin, a lot of the times um, they have uh, really light hair, really pale skin. Their eyes are like a reddish, but it's not because their eyes are red. It's because that is their blood vessels. Their eye color, they don't have an eye color. The red you see, the reddish purple thing you see, that is their blood vessels. That is their blood. That is not, that is not their color, right? Um, but yeah, things like that. Like, for example, did you know that people with that often also have light sensitivity? And by light sensitivity, I mean literally because they do not have the melanin, their skin, their eyes, 
are more susceptible to light. Therefore, they have to put sunscreen more often and be careful about being in the sun more often because they, you know, they get burned more often. Same with the eyes. They have to be more careful. They have to wear sunglasses outside sometimes. They have to just be outside blind because the light is so bright. Think of it as if you're looking with like the exposure on full blast. But yeah, this is super cool. This is super sweet. I'm loving it so far. See, new chapters like this, new extra, not new chapters, but new extra scenes that do not happen in the original. So we're starting to get to the point where it's like um, departing from the original. And I love that so much. Okay, as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.